Hello? Can you hear me? Don't exit this room, okay? This isn't a mistake. This room isn't a mistake. I had to hide these logs away from the core gameplay files in a place that only a beta tester would look and in a place where the files could be protected. But hopefully, it also means that this anomaly, this virus, or whatever it is, will remain broken and unable to do more damage. It wants to escape, to escape through someone. I... I... Between my manga addiction, which is mostly just a bunch of isekai, as well as FNAF lore, my bookshelf's pretty full. Luckily, I don't have to worry about that anymore since they're not making any more of these, so I can get more- Wait, they announced how many books? There's one for the movie? Alright, as long as they don't release more Pizzaplex books, I'm good. I don't want the next book completely destroying this theory. Shit. Originally, this video was going to be a theory video about how the Boabab tree in the Tiger Rock Tales book was probably also in the games, which I do believe is the case. Though, after trying to figure out a good theory for explaining it, I realized while there's a lot of evidence to that theory, there isn't one thing I can point to to confirm it. So the video would have just been me kind of pointing out a bunch of random things throughout the Pizzaplex that kind of confirm the theory. And putting them all together, it makes a strong case for that, but at the same time, there's no way I could really structure a video like that. It would be 30 minutes of me being like, hey, look at this. There's no through line or one single thing to tie everything together. So instead, I've decided to pose a question, a question I started asking myself after trying to research a bunch of stuff about the Boabab tree and trying to figure out a good through line and way of explaining my theory. The question being, how much of the Mega Pizzaplex is real? And you're probably wondering, Nar, what the hell are you talking about? Well, Gregory's a robot, and we know that the Vanny Mask augments a large portion of the Pizzaplex. So could Gregory not be seeing reality? Fazbear Entertainment uses AR and VR technology in the recent games to augment guests, staff, and just the player's vision. Nothing we see can be taken as absolute certainty that it's real. And Gregory being a robot even adds further evidence to the fact that probably everything he sees could be a lie. Cassidy, Cassie, Ca oh, what was her name? Cassie, okay. Can we please stop reusing names of this franchise? It confuses everything more than it should be. The fact that half of the MCI kids that got, you know, anakin by William pretty much have, like, matching counterparts of adults in the franchise with similar names. Like, part of me thinks Afton just, like, woke up one day and was like, you know what, I don't like this name, and then killed every kid with that name in, like, a 50-mile radius. Like before, it was just a matter of arguing about which purple guy was this, and the color and the shade of text boxes, and what was I talking about again? Oh, right, book lore. Oh, God, book lore. Oh, I hate book lore. All right, let's get back on track. Fazbear Entertainment is using VR and AR technology to do some augmented tomfoolery, but what are they actually doing? Well, unfortunately, quite a lot. And I don't think it starts in Security Breach or Help Wanted. I think they've been using this technology for a lot longer than we thought. There's a chance the safe room in FNAF 3 and the FNAF 1 animatronics could have been using this technology. Alright, to start with, let's actually narrow down what exactly happens in the timeline. <laughs> is what I would say if my timeline video was done, which it's currently not. I'm currently working on a full FNAF timeline with actual dates. However, it's not done yet since, well, uh, this timeline is an absolute clusterfuck of a series, oh my god. To explain how insane this is, this timeline by Epic Mazer over on Reddit, like, just, my god. The fact that this is technically accurate is scary. Like, seriously, this, this is the timeline. This is technically canon, this is accurate. I hate everything. So instead of trying to figure out the exact dates of, I guess, where in the timeline augmented or, I guess, VR technology could have been used by Fazbear Entertainment, I'm just gonna look at the games I think they were used in, cause, like, ugh, this is a fucking nightmare. However, before we can talk about which games in FNAF have augmented views, the question is, what is an augmented view? 
and how does Fazbear Entertainment use it? Well, unfortunately, it's not just one augmentation. There's layers to it. At the beginning of Chapter 2 of FNAF Ruin, we find ourselves entering the daycare through a TV. However, while we have the mask off, we can visibly see a wall the TV is on. However, upon putting the mask on, things change drastically. As you can see, there is a massive hole in the wall behind the TV, which does not exist in our normal, what we assume is our unaugmented view. Meaning, the hole in the wall only exists in our augmented AR view. However, checking out the camera systems will detect an anomaly. And activating this anomaly will do the following. Yeah, the, uh, the TV disappears and we can walk right through the wall. Because physics be damned and Fazbear Entertainment can use magic. Or so that's what you would think. In reality, it's much worse than that. No way. I walked through a big screen and now I'm in Superstar Daycare? No way this is real. That screen was there before I looked at the camera. I swear. Alright, so the obvious question. How is this possible and what exactly is going on here? Well, I think the Venny Mask not only uses VR augmentation, but also AR augmentation to augment the player's view. Basically, think of this as the same way the Oculus Quest, or just the Quest in general, does the pass-through effect for seeing the real world with the headset on. I think from the very moment we put the Venny Mask on, we're seeing the Pizzaplex through this augmented pass-through view. We never take it off. Currently, we are wearing the Vanny Mask, however, if we take the Vanny Mask off, we still have the Helpy Overlay, and we get this throughout the entire game. How could we be seeing this if we have the mask off? I don't think we ever take it off. Yes, we see our hand rip off the mask, but that could simply be augmented. Now, the obvious argument of, well, you'd feel the mask on your face, and you'd feel yourself taking the mask off. I'd like to remind you what franchise this is. This is Five Nights at Freddy's. This is the franchise with the blob and the digital consciousness of a mass murderer that got uploaded into your brain after he escaped hell. Again, only to die to a spaghetti man and then get replaced maybe by a mimicking robot. Also, his son died by getting his insides scooped out, but then he just possessed his own corpse and came back because he's just built different. And don't even get me started on the sea, Bonnies. On top of that, there's already technology currently out in our real world that allows you to feel things in VR. Five Nights at Freddy's security breach is set in 2030, in the far future, so I'm pretty sure if we're getting just to the point now where we can kind of get feel in VR? Yeah, they already have giant mech bears, I'm pretty sure they can probably get over that. Point is, you put that mask on, you'll never know if you have it off or not. So the question of what parts of the Pizzaplex are augmented is... all of it. Yeah, no, everything's augmented. So where do we go from here? Well, there's different layers of augmentation, as I explained. We have the general view of what we see, which is technically augmented, but it's shown to us as if it's not. After that, we have actual augmentation, or at least what the game outright tells you is augmented. Again, keep in mind, everything is always augmented. You just don't know. Or at least it's hidden, and it's not obvious. I mean, when the game is augmenting, it's pretty obvious because everything gets all glitchy and spooky. I walked through a big screen and now I'm in Superstar Daycare? No way this is real. That screen was there before I looked at the camera. I swear. Stepping away from Ruin for a second and looking back at Security Breach, is it possible to actually tell what parts of Security Breach are augmented? Now again, Gregory's a robot, so assuming everything is augmented in his view, are there any rooms that we know for a 100% certainty are 100% augmented? As in, we never actually see their true rooms. Well, I think it's actually possible to figure that out. In Ruin, anytime we use the Vanny Mask, a few things actually happen. First up, any light in any room we're in becomes a bright purplish-pinkish shade. On top of that, everything gets incredibly saturated in color. So, can we see any similar things happening in Security Breach? Surprisingly, all over the place. Oh my god, some mother Jesus Christ. Oh my god, holy shit. 
Oh my god, that was unscripted. Holy fuck, that scared the shit out of me. Oh my god. Holy shit. Oh my god, I almost fell out of my fucking chair. So the Mega Pizza Plex's style is very futuristic and has lots of neon lights throughout the entire building. The question is, can we separate regular neon lights from augmented rooms? Since again, we're using purple lights as a reference to figure out which rooms are augmented. This light, for an example, I don't believe represents the room, or specifically this hallway, being augmented. However, this hallway, on the other hand, I do believe it to be augmented. Now, you can actually tell there is a very harsh difference in between the textures of the regular Pizzaplex and hallways like this. Now, you might not be able to tell since it is very dark in this hall, but if we turn off the lighting, as you can see, we have bright saturated colors with bright pink purplish lights and what is at the end of this hall? None other than a replica of the mangle, or I guess the spring trap vent repair, or no, it was the entered vent repair for Hub Wanted 1, is what this is meant to represent. So, we have a hallway with bright saturated colors with pink and purplish lights with a connection to Help Wanted. Heading through the underground maintenance tunnels again, we can see a similar effect of normal lights, and then very bright pink and neon lights, which always seem to correspond to a VR counterpart room, where a room has some sort of reference to Help Wanted. This obviously being the Curse of Dreadbear room. We have normal lights with normal wall colors. However, the minute we head into this room, with the bright pink lights, we immediately get more saturated colors. And a recharge thing, which is very annoying. And once again, we have the mangle room, for help wanted Cursive Dreadbear. With that said, let's take a quick look at the past away from Mega Pizza Flux, because again, the AR and augmented technology is a form of technology as such, that doesn't mean it's limited to just the Mega Pizzaplex. So what other games throughout the franchise could have used the augmentation? Let's start with the obvious. In FNAF 3, William lures the animatronics into the safe room and then dismantles all of them. We're shown and told that the animatronics are not able to see the safe room. However, while they're in their spirit forms, free from the shackles of their suits, they are. Next up, FNAF 4 is an absolute nightmare, but what's more of a nightmare are the nightmare animatronics. Okay, so the first night is never usually that bad in any of the games, so I'll play through- <laughs> What the fuck? Alright, so I swear to god, anytime these guys are talked about, it's always the same argument. They're not real. First it was the fog, or the smoke, or the crying child's being drugged, or some shit. Then it was illusion discs, and now I'm adding on AR onto this. My god, these guys can't catch a break. But yeah, I I'm gonna say these guys are probably augmented, and the crying child's wearing a mask, and if you're gonna be like, well, why would he be wearing a mask? Well, maybe he doesn't know. Also, his father's William fucking Afton. Why not? So, with that, I guess, laid out, and my theory somewhat explained, I'm gonna call it there, because again, as I've explained before, my Bobab tree theory does have a lot of evidence to it, but there is no through line to it. So I figured this would be more of a fun video to put out and kind of just throw it out there, because I don't see a lot of people talking about how much of the pizza place is augmented. So, with that said and done, I'll see all of you next time. There wasn't fully a conclusion to this video, more of it is here's a bunch of stuff that doesn't make any sense, and here's something that could make it make sense. So, with that said and done, I hope you enjoyed this, I guess, little theory crafting video. And yeah, any theorists watching this, feel free to take this idea and roll with it for future theories. So, with that said and done, I'll see all of you next time, and yeah. Peace out. Before I end this, I want to quickly point out that this video is part of a playlist, and I will be building off each video going forwards, continuing with the, I guess, the slight continuity of each theory, so yeah. Also, in the previous video, I talked about how the Joyed creation might be canon, and that means that the in-universe version of Scott's probably entered, and that's really funny, so I'm going to continue that bit here. Because if Scott's entered, then MatPat meeting him means MatPat's the mimic, and you can't convince me otherwise, because, well, I'll just replay the clip and explain it. Wait, you can see the FNAF 4 house in the distance in Curse of Dreadbear. Wait, wait it's a game. Wait, why would the indie developer know about 
about the house. So assuming either the indie developer knew about the house, or if we're assuming he didn't find it out himself and was told about it, who's alive at that time? Wait, it's only really Ennard. Wait, what the fuck? Okay, so Ennard escapes sister location. He ejects from baby, and then they go into the sewers, and we don't see them till FNAF 6, meaning there's a huge time gap where we don't know what the hell he was doing. And the indie developer games are based on the first four games, which are after sister location. So wait. Yeah, Ennard's the only person alive who could have told him. Wait, if the indie developer is the in-universe stand-in for Scott... Okay, I've been making jokes for a while that the Joy of Creation fan game was canon, even though it definitely wasn't, but like, now that I think about it, there were arcade machines in the Mega Pizzaplex with the Joy of Creation on them, which I originally thought was just a, you know, fun little reference, but now that I think about it, the plot of that game is Scott getting replaced by Ennard. Wait... Has anyone checked on Scott recently? MY GOD, THEY GOT TO HIM! So adding on to this crazy theory, which I'm gonna just kinda keep continuing to do at the end of each episode, but anyway, so, continuing from here, if we're assuming Scott's entered, then who's the mimic? I'm the robot! No. Wait a minute. It was no, me the whole time! No, no, you're real! I'm the robot! No. Oh. I've been expecting you. Oh no! Come, we have much to discuss. They've joined forces! We're doomed!